The electric vehicle bubble has burst, but that doesn't mean they're going away. We've seen this before with other technological revolutions. Remember the 90s? That's when we saw the massive expansion and subsequent bursting of the dot-com bubble. So I want to compare that series of events to what's happening today to see what similarities exist and what we can learn because history does not repeat itself, but people do. The first similarity is the emergence of low interest rates right in the middle of a technology shift. Starting in 1990, the U.S. Federal Reserve cut its funds rate from 8% all the way down to 3% by 1992. That was done to avoid a potential recession, but it coincided with the emergence of the World Wide Web. So you had cheap capital available to invest in companies with new wacky dot-com business ideas. More recently, the Fed moved rates lower in 2019 over concerns of a growing trade war. And then, you know, COVID brought them all the way down to zero. Tesla had already established itself as a high-flying tech stock in the electric vehicle segment, and now other companies wanted to join that frenzy. The dot-com companies achieved enormous evaluations, numbers unsupported by traditional valuations. If you were an investor, the only thing you had to fear was of missing out. If you were a founder of one of these companies, you partied hard. For electric vehicle companies, they seemingly came out of nowhere to make new battery electric cars and trucks, to make batteries, to make EV charging, many of them opting to list their stock through a SPAC, which you probably know what that is, and now you probably know to be cautious about them. All of these stocks have fallen back to reality. Even Tesla is down from its peak. The EV bubble has burst, but don't view that as a failure of the technology. It's just an end to the irrational exuberance of the market. Aside from investors making the same mistakes, what can we learn from the dot-coms? I would say that Sometimes even good ideas fail. Selling pet supplies online, fail. Groceries online, fail. Buying clothing online, also fail. It turns out that these were not dumb ideas, it's what we now call e-commerce. They may have been poorly managed companies, too early. Whatever the reason, other companies took these same ideas and found success. Electric vehicles have been mired in misinformation, but the science is clear. Climate change is real, and EVs reduce carbon emissions. Yes, yes, I know. Even when you take into account the manufacturing of the battery, and if you assume all the electricity comes from fossil fuels, they still produce less emissions because they're just more efficient than internal combustion engines. Legacy automakers will have to ease their customers offering hybrids, they're going to need plug-in hybrids, maybe even gasoline-powered range extenders for their battery electrics. But all of these powertrains are a move towards electric, and that's still the vision. It's just how do we get there and when. Some companies did survive the dot-com collapse. They had to tighten their belts, no more parties, no more Super Bowl ads, focus on their operations, and reevaluate their business strategy. Amazon struggled to make money shipping books, so they pursued efficiencies in their operations to lower costs. They then pivoted to sell music and videos as well, and then later opened it up to third parties to sell, well, just about anything. Netflix nearly went under when the bubble burst, delaying its plans to go public and laying off nearly a third of its workforce. It changed its business model from a per-rental pricing to a subscription model, and then later got into streaming videos. You know, I, I wonder how many people have forgotten that Netflix started off renting DVDs, and now they are what they are today. The lesson for EV companies, you should not be afraid to make uncomfortable business decisions, delaying products, less spending, adjustments to the product plan. They should be deathly afraid of not making any changes, assuming things will get better and not making any tough decisions is almost certain to result in failure. Every forecast has something in common. It's wrong. So when companies make big, bold decisions, they need to accept the fact that there is inherent risk. Netflix had to match the launch of their streaming service with the availability of broadband at home. 
much like electric vehicles need a charging network in order to be successful. Much later, in 2011, Netflix messed up. And that's not me saying that. That was the CEO Reed Hastings' own words. They lost 800,000 subscribers when they announced that they would start charging online streaming separate from its DVD rental business. That move to streaming was absolutely the right technological decision, but it was a shock to their customers how it was implemented. It was too soon for many of them. Likewise, we're seeing some established automakers pull back on their plans, realizing they may have gone in too soon with too many battery plants and too many large, expensive EVs, just at a time when consumers are wondering, why did they kill off all the affordable models? Every forecast is wrong. The key is to be flexible enough with your business decisions while still remaining committed to the long-term technological vision. While dot-coms were the stars of the e-commerce movement, there were other supporting industries. Browsers, like Netscape, remember that name? They played a pivotal role in getting the world online. The landscape of internet service providers have really changed over the years, and you can't go online without some kind of electronic device in your home. Beyond this, companies working making electric vehicles, there are business opportunities for companies who make batteries, operate public EV charging, or home charging as well. These supporting businesses are just as important as the EV manufacturers themselves and likely to see a mixture of successes and failures. We can expect that some companies will ultimately fail, especially the startups who have nothing else to fall back on. For the employees of those companies who work their ass off, for the owners of the products who believed in them, and for the investors, it all sucks when they go under, but that will happen when this bubble bursts, just like every other. There will also be some mergers and acquisitions that take place. Sometimes this is how the founders of the company make their fortune, not by actually making a successful company, but by making one that just lasts long enough to be acquired by a larger company. I think this will happen mostly in the supporting businesses like battery manufacturing and EV charging. A few of these have already taken place. History tells us that some of these will succeed under a new name, but many of them will just fade away into the new organization that absorbed them. Now that the bubble has burst, some companies are looking for buying opportunities while others are seeking mergers out of necessity. And for those companies that get into trouble, we can expect them to fail and be replaced by other companies. The failure of Pets.com did not bring an end to dog and cat toys online. It just delayed it until someone else came along with a better run company. And this is why Western governments are concerned with China. They don't want cheap competition making it more difficult for these startups to survive. And they don't want the replacement companies to all come from China. Thus, tariffs and other restrictions are being put into place. And China is also concerned. They're sitting on a bubble of their own. I don't think it's popped yet, and maybe it never will. They need to stimulate enough domestic consumption long enough until new markets open up and become ready to buy electric vehicles. Markets like South America and Southeast Asia. And they also need to deal with those new trade barriers through negotiation or potentially by investing in new plants in each region to show the local governments that they're committed to make jobs. There's just way too much capacity of vehicles in China, combustion engine vehicles and electric vehicles alike. They can't contain it. Something has to give. So in summary, the future is still electric. The road to get there will be filled with potholes and traffic jams, but there's not going to be a U-turn. We're not reversing direction. That means there'll be plenty of opportunities for more videos like this one. So how about hitting that subscribe button, give it a like, and thank you for watching.